You know, you're gonna fail, right? You watch this new life hack, a productivity tip, you get all excited about it, that tingling feeling in your fingers, and then you try it out for a little while and you end up exactly here, failing to make it stick. But if you knew the reasons why you fail, you think that would make things a little bit easier? Self-development is one of the hottest topics on YouTube right now. And the fact that we are consuming it so much, it's a good thing. Because we grow increasingly conscious about ourselves and what it takes to live the life that we truly want. But some of the efforts that we spend on it are wasted. Because the way we consume self-development content is wrong. Have you watched a YouTube video and got all excited because this one has the answer to the questions you are asking? And if you just apply the concepts that are laid out there, your life will change forever. And so you go all excited and make it work for a little while and nothing happens. And so we become disillusioned until, well, until the next YouTube video that shows up. And this time, our life will surely change for good. You know what I'm talking about. So questions arise, like why is it the case that those tips seem to work for other people and not myself? Or am I just not disciplined enough to follow through? Or are all these productivity tips and life hacks just nonsense? The answer lies in what I like to call the compulsion of pursuing direct results. We love this link of action and reaction, instant gratification. Like when we asked that girl out and she said yes. Or when we do this awesome presentation at work and get promoted. Or when we watch the productivity tip and our life changes. Yes. This is exactly how our brain works. Our phones. They have taught us that if we keep scrolling, we get rewarded with more interesting articles, news, productivity tips instantly. The problem is that life actually never works that way. Even in the above examples, the result is linked to a far more complex set of conditions. You asked that girl out and she said yes. But what you forget to mention is that you have actually worked on your body for the last three or four years and now she finds you attractive. Or you used to be an old grumpy bastard, but now you pay more attention to your thoughts and your actions and how you carry yourself and she finds that incredibly charismatic. Or take that presentation at work. It feels like you made this presentation and got promoted. But what actually happened is that over the past few years, you really got excited about the subject that you were talking about. You researched a lot, you learned a lot, and now it all came together in this one presentation. But the result of your promotion is actually the result of those years of work. So what about productivity tips then? Why am I saying that we are doing it wrong? It follows this pattern. We recognize a habit that makes somebody successful. And then we find other examples where that is true as well. And we conclude, if we apply this habit, we have the same result. What we don't do, however, is asking whether that pattern can actually relate to our lives. For example, is this true or false? Here's the thing, if you do get up at 4 a.m., you likely will have no distractions. Nobody will bother you. You can sit on your couch, listen to a motivational podcast, you can do your writing, your phone is still on silent, you miss out on all those disturbing notifications. So yes, it makes you very successful. And clearly, people like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, they do it and they are successful, so it must be true. But now tune into your own life. Maybe your shift ends at 9 p.m. and you get home at 10. Or you have your baby crying until 11 p.m. Or you get home and you want to spend some time with your girlfriend because she wants to watch that movie. And so you go to bed at midnight and waking up at 4 a.m. doesn't make you successful. 
it makes you tired. But if you're an early riser and can go to bed at 9 p.m., then this might be for you because it works. But equally, if you get up at 10 a.m. and can still avoid all the distractions, you'll be just fine. We mistake cause and effect. We want get up at 4 and you'll be successful. But what you get instead is get up and avoid distractions. That works for your life and that makes you successful. Elon Musk manages two major and a bunch of smaller businesses. He does all of it in the same 24 hours that you have. So if you just use your time better, you'll be able to do that too. There is no question that being conscious of how we use our time can significantly boost our productivity. This part is mainly about being intentional. Are your actions aligning with what you're trying to achieve or do you get distracted or pulled into many directions? But you don't have the same 24 hours as Elon. You don't even have the same 24 hours as me. I don't have a baby that gets me up in the morning. I don't have a pet like Matt that needs walking. And I could reduce my work hours these days because I've saved from a previous job where I worked 80 hours a week. You might not be there. You might be in a very different place. I can spend four hours a day just thinking about productivity and career tips easy. Maybe you can only spend one hour a day thinking about your true passion. And you know what? That's okay. As long as you're true to yourself and admit that you have this one hour, because I know it's very easy to say I have zero hours because after work, I can only crash on the couch to some Netflix. Again, the statement is misleading. It pretends that we are doing something wrong when, as a matter of fact, the real message is use your time intentionally. And if that's just 30 minutes, so be it. Because if you use those 30 minutes to support your goals, I promise you, you'll be ahead of 80% of all the other people who have 30 minutes because they conclude that 30 minutes that isn't enough time to start anything. Statistics are a funny thing. Not without reason, someone intelligent said, if your experiment needs statistics, you ought to have done a better experiment. That man was Ernst Rutherford, a New Zealand-born physicist that became known as the father of nuclear physics. Statistics find that a happy worker is up to 12% more productive than an unhappy one. So making your employees happy seems to be a no-brainer. And we see some of the efforts in the tech world. Free food, playrooms, the ability to work from anywhere. But we often dismiss the downsides. If you are constantly happy and something happens, you are less resilient. And if you try forcing happiness in the workplace, it easily backfires. Again, we are confusing cause and effect. It is true, when we are happier, we become more productive. But if we do something that is meaningful to us, we come up with better solutions, more creative solutions, and that makes us more productive. And if you can instill that purpose and meaning into your own life, you might be happier but you will be more productive doing something that is meaningful to you. So, do I think you should consume less self-help content or advice on productivity? No, I don't. I do think it's actually really helpful to reflect on our life and identify areas that could improve. But what you should never do is use those things as a quick fix. Let's say you are allergic against lilies you wouldn't put lots of lilies in your bedroom just because plants make you happier, right? So don't just put productivity hacks into your life without seeing how they work together with your life and with your personality. As a result, you will probably apply far fewer of those productivity tips into your life. But I'm also convinced that the ones that you do implement will have a true impact to your life. 
for me, having meaning, blending out distractions and being more intentional about the time that I have available, those are productivity tips that really work for me because they align with my life. What about yourself? Let me know in the comment section below what works for you and if this video is helpful to you, then I appreciate your like and subscribe. I will see you next time. Take care.